I was reading through the book from Esther on Ask It and It Is Given, and there's a topic that confuses me greatly, and it is about there being nothing in my life that I've not been involved in inviting, and I'm confused because that tells me that from my perspective, there's no randomness. Yeah, there is. And that in some way, everything that's happened that I've experienced, in some way I've asked for or allowed to come in. Well, that's right. Next. <laughs> we're not making fun, but that is what we just offered to you in the few minutes that we were talking just now, that we didn't say that you created it deliberately, but we do say that you created it. We do say that somehow you offered a vibration about it consistently enough that it became your experience. And it's important to understand that you didn't just start when your mother gave birth to you. You are long time energy with intentions coming in also. And so while there is nothing negative in nature that you came in with. There was nothing that you came in with that you needed to make up for or to compensate for. You did come with powerful intentions. And so everything that happens to everyone is created by them through their accomplishing deliberately or by default a vibration long enough and consistently enough that, you see, I see, and I, I see that I've got a lot of understanding yet to achieve about how my physical aspects are related to my non-physical aspects. I've had a very physical focus. Well, it is not our wish that our message to you, our clarification about how the universe works, puts you in a position of saying, I've got a lot of work to do, or I've got a lot of undoing to do. It is our desire that wherever you stand, that you feel uplifted by the knowledge that from where you stand, you're still launching rockets of desire. And every one of those rockets of desire is understood and being received by the larger part of you. And that it is not as difficult as it might seem to find vibrational alignment with the desire instead of with what is. But what trips so many people up is that they don't even realize that giving attention to what is just perpetuates more of what is. And so we come along and we want to explain to you that what has manifested has been in the pipeline and been in the works for quite a long time. And really, once it manifested, it is very much old news. But it doesn't feel like old news to humans because you can still see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it. So you call it now and real and active and now and current. And we see your point. We get why it seems current to you, but it doesn't seem current to us because it has been in the process of becoming for such a long time. And there are other things that are in the process of becoming that your attention to what you believe is reality prevents you from experiencing the things that are in the pipeline that could be different. In other words, you get what you think about whether you want it or not, and things are changing constantly. But for most people, because they are so embroiled in what is, for most people, the things that are changing constantly are just changing to more of the same. When the same is launching rockets of improvement, which you could be moving toward if you just understood that. You see? My rocket is the desire to understand. Well, the thing that we like so much about your willingness to come to a gathering like this is that as you sit in willingness to hear us, and since the larger part of you knows what we know, your inner being knows what we know, so as you listen for a little while, you begin to acquiesce is a pretty good word to the vibration that we are offering, which means your vibration is rising to that which you really know. And sometimes because of the words that we are speaking from this platform, sometimes they come from Esther's mouth, sometimes they come from your mouth, but the words that happen in this gathering 
you feel resonance with them. And that resonance that you feel is because you've joined your inner being in what your inner being knows. And when you hear something that your inner being knows, you feel it. And for that moment of resonance, you know it too. Now, you're probably not going to be able to maintain it because you're probably going to go back out into your world and you're going to observe as you've been observing. And so you'll be finding resonance with that stuff rather than resonance with who you really are and what you really know. But here's the part that we like the most. If we can get your attention about these laws of the universe, and if we can somewhat convince you that there is a larger part of you and that there is a vibrational reality and that your life is supposed to feel good to you and that life is getting better and better and better for you. If we can convince you or even get you to want to know that some of this is as we say it is. And then if we can talk you into just for a little while, sitting every moment for 15 or 20 minutes and actually meditating, which means you quiet your mind, which means you stop your own thoughts, which means you stop resistant thoughts, which means you allow your vibration to rise, which means you allow yourself by your deliberate practice of meditation to be in the receptive mode of what your inner being knows so that you begin to receive impulses and thoughts that you know you didn't conjure with your usual conscious mind. In other words, you just get an impulse about something and you know for sure where it came from. Now, you'll be practicing this all along, but as you find it and you know it and you experience it, because words don't really teach. Words like music, words like so many things that are pleasing to you can help you to find resonance with the source within you. That happens to you all the time. But to consciously and actively look for that resonance so that you are deliberately more of the time in the receptive mode so that your guidance and inspiration is known by you to be coming from there, then and only then is when you can really trust your guidance. Esther's been practicing this for a long while. She's been receiving us since 1985. And every day, or nearly so, she finds time to meditate because she can feel the difference. She always looks up for Abraham, whether she's receiving from Abraham or whether she's receiving from the spin-off of man's conscious thought. And it's a question that she asks all day, every day. As a thought comes to her or as a thought is unfolding in her mind, she will say, what receiving mode am I in? Where's that thought coming from? Is this consensus with source? Or is this consensus with worrisome, paranoid people on the planet? Where's this thought coming from? For example, on Thursday, she went to the airport in San Diego and went through the security. Because she flies so much, she gets what they call a TSA pre-check, which means she doesn't have to take her computers out and she doesn't have to take her shoes off. She likes that a lot. So she's moving along through, and she put her bags onto the conveyor belt, and she had a very strong impulse to move quickly because there were people coming from different places. And to get into that machine that will check her for metal, but she had that impulse, and then she hesitated from it. So she wasn't sure which impulse came from where. She wasn't sure if the impulse to move along quickly was from source or from somewhere else. And she didn't have time to sort it out before she really had no choice. And a man stepped in front of her and went through. And she thought to herself, that's really interesting because she knew something was up with it. She just didn't know what it was. So she walked through and the beeper went off. Now, there was no metal on her. It was a random search of electronics. And Esther laughed as they took her two bags to be searched because she had in her bag two computers, an iPad, two iPod, the recorder, this microphone, this microphone. She had five different garage door clickers because she's moving from one place to another, five sets of car keys, her own cell phone, a bag full of wires and chargers. And so she stood in front of the young woman who was about to go through her bags and she said to her, my thoughts and prayers are with you. <laughs> because 
She knew there was a lot going on here. Now, Esther had plenty of time. She had an hour before she was boarding, and so she didn't really mind the process. It was a little disconcerting to see everything that matters to her strewn all over the table. And one piece at a time, the woman is wiping them all down. It took 15 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. So Esther is standing there and sort of relaxing into it a little bit, and she is asking herself, because she's not allowed to touch anything, and so she just stood back, and she's watching the process. She also had jewelry. She's watching the process, and she's thinking to herself, it's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction. Everything is attraction. And then she thought, well, nothing terrible is happening here. And then the young woman said to her, why do you have all of this? And Esther said, oh, I'm on my way. I'm going to be conducting a seminar. What about? <laughs> well, it's about law of attraction. And the woman went crazy because she knows about law of attraction. She's read these books. She was so delighted to have a really up-close experience <laughs> with Esther. And then it all came to Esther. Esther said, you know, I've been standing here trying to figure out what was in my vibration that would cause me to have this delayed experience, have all of this happen, all of this which I've been considering something not wanted. So I was wondering what's going on with me that I would attract this. And then Esther smiled and said, and I'm delighted to discover that my attraction was you. My attraction was you. This lovely girl who wants to understand, who was more the attractor of Esther even than Esther was the attractor of her, although that's never an accurate statement, is it? Because whatever comes is always equally attracted. Nothing accidental ever happens. And so as then Esther is allowed to now begin to put things back together. And she said to her new friend, and by the way, I've been looking for that. <laughs> there were some things in the bottom of that bag that Esther had lost track of altogether. <laughs> and so what we're getting at, we think you are understanding what we're getting at, but until you allow life to unfold, don't jump to any quick conclusions about how you're doing. Just let life show you how you're doing. Let life unfold and show you how you're doing because there are two ways always to know how you're doing. One is how you feel in the moment. And that was a little confusing to Esther because she was feeling great. She was moving along. She was feeling really good until she had that moment of hesitation. Now, if she jumped ahead of that man, which was a thought that she thought, this is what we really want you to hear. As she's standing at what she calls the checkpoint, which is a little negative in connotation. And she had an impulse to jump ahead of that man. And if she had, she would have sailed right through and he would have had the encounter with the woman. So as Esther had that feeling, but then she didn't want to be rude. She didn't want to jump in front of someone. So she followed another impulse. So do you ever have those questions about what's my real guidance? Well, as it plays out, the point that we're making with you is now you know sort of kind of how it works. And now you know what positive emotion means and what negative emotion means. And then as you have the benefit of being able to witness things unfold, it gives you all of the answers that you're looking for. And it gives you even more opportunity to offer your thoughts in the direction of things that yield to you more results that you are enjoying. You see what we're getting at? It's the randomness of it that makes you feel insecure. It's the erroneous and flawed belief that there are other people out there that are after you, that have the ability to negatively impact you against your will that has you upside down in your life experience. But when you get it, that it's attraction, 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 it's attraction, attraction, it's only attraction, attraction, attraction. And I have control over what I'm offering vibrationally, which is the reason for everything that I attract. 
Then life becomes this adventure instead of a challenge. Then contrast becomes the opportunity to grow something really wonderful and more rather than something that you're tripping over. Then every moment of every day is what you knew it would be when you decided to come into this body to begin with. It's this adventure of expansion that you are all upon.